Okay, let's take a look at these two practice problems. Um, the first one, it, like, you can do analytically. It doesn't require a calculator. And you can get yourself through the problem pretty easily. It Like, the key here is that there's a discontinuity at 2. And you just plug in the two values to see if they're equal. So, like, the natural log of 2 is what you would get in the first one. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is going to be the natural log of 2, right? So the, what we just said here is that the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, uh, so that's of the natural log of x is equal to the natural log of 2. And then, so that's from the left. And then if I take the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, so that's going to be of x squared times the natural log of x. Well, that's going to give me, let's see, 2 squared is 4. Sorry, it's not times the natural log of x. That's not correct. It's times the natural log of 2, right? Is going to give me 4 times the natural log of 2. And these are not equal, which means that ultimately this limit has to be non-existent. Now, on the BC, this would probably not be a calculator active problem. Um, but let's look at how you would handle it if it were, right? Or not even that. Let's just look at how you could get a picture of this if you had your calculator available. So I'm going to bring up my calculator here. And I'm going to turn it on. And... I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to do a little trick here, and this is where this can be a little bit instructive. So this is a piecewise equation, right? So what I construct this thing is to say I want this thing to be the natural log of x, and then I'm going to multiply that, it seems like an odd thing to do, times x, and then I'm going to use my test. So if you go to second math, you get these tests, okay? And I want x to be less than or equal to 2. Okay, so the logic behind this is pretty interesting. What I just said is, see this, this x is less than or equal to 2, is going to return 0 when that's false, and it's going to return 1 when that's true. So this is kind of a useful way to do this. So it will graph that value as 0, which will look like the x-axis, when the net, when x is bigger than 2. But it's going to graph it as it is, because it's multiplying by 1, when it's less than 2, right? Less than or equal to 2. Okay, so that's interesting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add to that. Okay. And then we're going to say, we're going to take the second piece and go x squared times the natural log of 2, right? And I want that to be when x is bigger than 2. So I'm going to go second test and grab the bigger than 2. So this is going to graph as 0 when I'm less than or equal to 2, and then graph as itself when I'm bigger than 2. Now, I'm going to window a little bit here, because if I look at my frame, my function is only defined on 0 to 4, right? Otherwise, the function is undefined, and it's actually not even defined at 0. Um, and then I want to look at my y, because like negative 10 is fine. Um, 4 squared times the natural log of 2 is going to be pretty high up there. It's going to exceed 10. So let's make that 15. And let's get a graph of that. And lo and behold, through a little bit of trickery here, it looks like it's a piecewise function. And you can see what we said before, that the left-hand side doesn't approach the same thing the right-hand side at 2, which means this limit is x equals 2 does not exist. Okay. All right. So this second one is also pretty instructive. Um, it's asking here for the limit as x approaches 1 of the sine of f of x. Okay. 
the key here is is that the sign is continuous okay now we're gonna figure out a, a more technical definition of con continuity in today's homework but basically in two dimensions continuity is the same as um, connected which is interesting um, it is not true in three dimensions or four dimensions so in two-dimensional reality continuity and um, connected are the same which is the old idea that like if I can keep and trace it with my pencil without having to lift my pencil then it's continuous only holds in two-dimensional reality um, and you get into multivariate calculus you're gonna see that that doesn't hold uh, right now though we'll work with that for what we've got here um, the sine curve is definitely continuous. It's going up and down and up and down, and I can keep tracing the whole thing with my pencil as long as I want to. So something happens here. If this function is continuous, I can move the limit inside. So the sine of the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is what I've got here. And... Looking at my graph, as this function approaches 1, I get 2. So this is going to be the sine of 2. Okay, so I have to be like a little consistent about that, right? Because like f of 1 is not going to work here, right? And then remember, this is like the graph of f, right? This is, there we go, that guy. So this one would have to be a calculator active problem, right? Um, I would go in and I would say sine of 2. And my calculator gives me 0 0.909. Now, if your calculator gave you something else, that's a mode issue. Okay, in math class, we are always in the radian mode, okay? Oftentimes in like physics or geometry, things like that, they might use degrees as the measure. Everything on the BC calc exam is in radians. Also note that the answers here are all three decimal places. Okay, so the standards for the BC exam is that you can either round or truncate two three decimal places okay you have to have at least three but you can round or truncate to three that's the degree of precision that they require so this is why i can stop at the 909 now here both the rounding and the truncating give me the same number they give you the 0.909 if that happened to have been like 0.9097 then the BC exam would accept either 0 0.909, which is the truncating, you just lopped off the 7, or it would accept 0 0.910, which is the rounding. Those would be the two acceptable answers, according to the College Board, on the BC. So these are fairly pithy um, problems that you can get a lot out of, and I hope that you have. All right. Thank you.